Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to talk about difference between gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So let's start. So let's first understand that from where this word gram has been taken in gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Then you should know that there was a Danish bacteriologist named as Dr. Hans Christian Gram. From the name of this bacteriologist, this word has been originated, right? And now you should know that Dr. Hans Christian Gram developed the Gram staining technique in 1884, right? Now let's see the first point of difference, color retention. So what kind of color is retained by Gram positive bacteria and Gram negative bacteria after performing Gram staining? Let's understand with the help of a schematic diagram first, right? So here, suppose we are going to take an unknown bacterial culture. And when we perform gram staining for this particular culture, firstly we add crystal wallet, right? After addition of crystal wallet, what we expect that all bacterial cells present in this culture will be going to take what? Purple color of the dye, right? Which is also called, called as a primary stain here. In second step, we will be adding iodine. Iodine here act as a mordant. Iodine forms an insoluble complex with the crystal wallet which has already been retained by bacterial cells in step number one. Right. So after this step we are going to add here 95% ethyl alcohol. Okay. So after addition of 95% ethyl alcohol which uh, here act as a decolorizer. Right. So what will happen? Some bacterial cells will be able to retain the crystal wallet and some uh, cells will lose the crystal wallet what they have retained in the previous step right in the last step as per gram staining protocol we will be adding safranin so safranin here act as what safranin here act as a counter stain and this stain is also called as a secondary stain because this stain we add to stain those uh, bacterial cells which have lost the crystal wallet in the previous step that is by addition of decolorizer so after the addition of safranin results come like this now we are coming back here here you should know the bacteria which take purple color, they are actually called as gram positive bacteria. Okay. And bacteria which take the color of the counter stain, safranin, and appear pinkish in color, they are called as the gram negative bacteria. Right. Let's see the second point of difference gram reaction. Gram reaction is actually based on the principle of retainment of the primary stain, that is crystal wallet. So here we say the gram reaction is positive for gram positive bacteria. Okay because they are able to retain the crystal wallet that is the primary stain right and for gram negative bacteria the gram reaction as their name is indicating it will be what negative right so they are called as gram negative because they are not able to retain crystal wallet after addition of decolorizer but they take the color of counter stain let's see the third point of difference cell wall in case of gram positive bacteria cell wall is single layered and in case of gram negative bacteria Cell wall is two layered or we can say double layered, right? Let's uh, understand the concept of cell wall, how it is single layered and two layered with the help of a pictorial presentation now. So here what you can observe, if we first uh, observe the bacterial cell wall structure of gram positive bacteria, then you can observe here, of course, inner layer is of plasma membrane and outside this inner plasma membrane layer, one layer is present, okay? And that is made up of what? Peptidoglycan. So here we can say, there is a single layer of uh, peptidoglycan which is actually constituting what cell wall of gram positive bacteria that's why we say cell wall of gram positive bacteria is single layered okay now we are going to uh, have a look on the gram negative bacteria cell wall so what you can observe here of course peptidoglycan layer is there as it was present in case of gram positive bacteria in the same way in case of gram negative bacteria also peptidoglycan layer is there but outside this layer one additional layer is present what is called as what outer membrane right so in this way we can say the cell wall is actually in case of gram negative bacteria is called as two layered cell wall right let's see the next point of difference peptidoglycan so if we talk about peptidoglycan then you should know peptidoglycan is present in case of gram positive bacteria and it is thick layered right or we can say many layers of peptidoglycan are present and what is the thickness of peptidoglycan layer here? It ranges between 20 to 80 nanometer. And of course, if many layers are there, extensive cross-linking is here, right? And now we are coming towards the gram-negative bacteria. In this case, what you can observe that here it is thin-layered peptidoglycan. Or we can say only one or two layers are present when we compare it with that of gram-positive bacteria. And if we talk about the thickness of peptidoglycan, then you should know comparatively the thickness 
is very less to only 2 to 7 nanometer when we compare it with that of gram positive where it is uh, between 20 to 80 nanometer right so now as number of layer is less here of course thin layered peptidoglycan is there and correspondingly cross links are also few here so further if you would like to uh, understand in detail then you can also check some of the videos on bacterial cell wall and peptidoglycan structure and chemistry what i previously uploaded on the same channel okay well now we are coming towards the fifth point of difference outer membrane in case of gram positive bacteria of course outer membrane is absent and in case of gram negative bacteria outer membrane is present and the thickness of outer membrane in case of gram negative bacteria is around 7 to 8 nanometer let's see the next point of difference lipid content lipid content is low in case of gram positive bacteria and it is high in case of gram negative bacteria how we can say that lipid content is low here of course we can observe here here only one membrane is present and membrane is chiefly composed of what by lipids and proteins right so here on the other hand in case of gram negative bacteria we can observe the presence of two membranes that are responsible for contributing towards the high lipid content in case of gram negative bacteria right let's see the seventh point of difference lipopolysaccharide lps lps is a major component of outer membrane okay so lps is absent in case of gram positive bacteria because here no outer membrane is present on the other hand lps is present in case of gram negative bacteria because lps belongs to outer membrane and outer membrane is present in case of gram negative bacteria the presence of lps is very important in case of gram negative bacteria how lps actually act as a permeability barrier and it is also responsible for giving negative charge to the bacterial cell surface and thirdly lps is also responsible for contributing towards the pathogenicity of a pathogenic microbe well now we are coming towards the eighth point of difference periplasmic space so let's see periplasmic space is present where and where not so in case of gram positive bacteria it is present only in some bacteria but not in all bacteria and always the periplasmic space in case of gram positive bacteria is narrow on the other hand in case of gram negative bacteria the periplasmic space is wide and it is present in all bacteria right so now you may be thinking what is periplasmic space then you should know periplasmic space is the space that occupies between the cell wall and the membrane so this is the cell wall and this is the membrane here we can say this is the periplasmic space in case of gram positive bacteria but you know most of uh, the times when we are going to perform electron microscopic examination it is very difficult to observe periplasmic space in case of gram positive bacteria only in some bacteria um, it its significant presence has been reported right on the other hand in case of gram negative bacteria of course we say periplasmic space is wide right so here you can observe what is the periplasmic space space between the cell wall and the membrane so here we can see in actually the periplasmic space peptidoglycan layer is present in case of gram negative bacteria right let's see the ninth point of difference ticoic acid so ticoic acids are present in case of gram positive bacteria and they are absent in case of gram negative bacteria so if we talk about ticoic acid here you can see by these purple bodies the presence of ticoic acid has been shown now ticoic acids exist in two forms first one is what ticoic acid which is actually cell wall linked and another form of ticoic acid is what which is membrane linked which is attached attached to the membrane lipids that's why we call it as lipoticoic acid right what are ticoic acid chemically they are actually the polymers of glycerol and ribitol right and of course uh, again i'm going to update you it is responsible for contributing the negative charge to the bacterial cell surface so let's see the next point of difference porine proteins porine proteins are absent in case of gram positive bacteria and they are present in case of gram negative bacteria so now let's see the location of porine protein they generally exist in trimeric form right and when they exist in this trimeric form they form narrow channels and through these narrow channels small molecules like sugar starch hydrophilic nutrients they can easily pass through the channels right let's see the next point of difference toxin production gram positive bacteria are well known to produce exotoxins okay and gram negative bacteria they are known to produce what androtoxins so let's see now exotoxin means they are released outside the cell and you should know they are, they are secreted by the cell okay and if we talk about endotoxin they are not secreted by the cell because they are actually a part of the bacterial cell endotoxin belongs to outer membrane and outer membrane is made up of what lps lps stands for what 
lipopolysaccharide, right? Then you should know lipopolysaccharide is actually the major component which acts as an endotoxin only after lysis of the cell. Now, LPS is a species which is a complex species. Lipid A is actually the toxic part of LPS which codes for endotoxin, right? So, now we are going to have a look on 12th point of difference. Let's see what is that number of rings in vessel body of flagella. In case of gram positive bacteria, two rings are present which are called as outer ring and inner ring. And in case of gram negative bacteria, four rings are there L ring, P ring, MS ring, and C ring. So, here you can see I have included two pictures. One is representing picture of uh, ultrastructure of flagella in case of gram positive bacteria, and another one is in case of gram negative bacteria, right? So, let's first understand about the parts of the flagella. Then you should know first part is what filament, okay? After that, this broaden part is representing you what hook. And after the hook, what is there? Basal body is there, right? This basal body is actually embedded in the cellular envelope, right? So, here what you can observe in case of basal body of gram positive bacteria, two rings are there. So, one ring is called as the OR, that is outer ring, and another ring is called as inner ring, right? Outer ring is actually linked to the peptidoglycan, and the inner ring is embedded where in the plasma membrane, right? On the other hand, if we talk about gram negative bacteria, then here you can observe four rings are there, right? What are, what are those four rings? Let's observe their presence. L ring. L ring is present where? In outer membrane. You can also memorize it by LPS. L4, LPS. LPS is forming here outer membrane, right? Another ring is P ring. P ring is uh, present where? In peptidoglycan layer. Now, third one, MS ring. MS ring, as its name is indicating, M stands for membrane. So, of course, it is present where? In the membrane, right? And the last one is C ring. C ring is present on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. Now, uh, one more thing I would like to tell you. In some of the old edition of microbiology books, if you will be studying this topic, then you will be finding uh, rings uh, in basal body have been la labeled as L, P, M and S, right? But of course, this is the new terminology. What I am going to introduce you here, outer ring, inner ring and L, P, M, S and C ring, which is according to the latest edition and the updated versions of the book, right? Let's see the 13th point of difference now, mesosome. Mesosomes are more prominent in case of gram positive bacteria and they are less prominent in case of gram negative bacteria. Let's observe the presence of mesosomes with the help of this picture. This green one is representing you the presence of what? This green layer is cell wall and inside the green layer is what? This yellowish layer is representing you the presence of plasma membrane. Here you can see this yellowish one is we are going to say this is mesosome. So here you can clearly observe that mesosome is actually a kind of extension we can say or invagination of plasma membrane, okay? And mesosomes are well known to play an important role in case of cell wall synthesis as well as DNA replication in case of bacterial cell. Let's see the next point of difference, pili or pili. So if we talk about pili, then you should know in case of gram positive bacteria, pili are absent. And in case of gram negative bacteria, pili are present. So let's understand the presence of pili with the help of this picture. So here I'm going to show you bacterial cell with cell surface appendages. First one is flagella, which is an organ related to the locomotion or provides the bacteria motility. Second one is fimbri, and they help the bacteria in attachment. And third one, what we are going to discuss here is pili. So, uh, if we talk about pili, then you should know pili are also hair-like appendages and they are, we can say they are even thicker than fimbri and they are longer than fibri, fimbri but shorter than the flagella. And pili have been found to play an important role in gene transfer from one bacterial cell to the another bacterial cell. Let's see the uh, next point of difference, resistance to osmotic pressure. So, of course, in case of gram positive bacteria, resistance to os osmotic pressure is more. And in case of gram negative bacteria, it is less. So, it can directly be correlated to the presence of peptidoglycan thickness. Fluctuation in osmotic pressure can easily be resist resisted or tolerated due to the presence of thick peptidoglycan layer here in this case. Well, let's see the next point, susceptibility to anionic detergents and antibiotics. Gram-positive bacteria are more susceptible than gram-negative bacteria which are less susceptible. Let's see the next point of difference, examples. Bacillus, Clostridium, Lactobacillus, Listeria, Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus, so etc. Right? List is long and here I have included some of the commonly uh, known gram positive bacteria. Well, now we are coming towards the gram negative bacteria example. So, E. coli, Enterobacter, Clapsiella, Pseudomonas, Salmonella, Shigella. These are very well known examples of gram negative bacteria, right? So, I hope this content is really going to help you. Thank you so much. Keep watching.